Hey everyone, Fuseman coming at ya. This very quick update video on the Fuse VR Web3 Crypto APIs, which is there's a new update based on a user request that came off of Discord, which if you're not part of Discord, is probably the fastest way to get in touch with me and chat with the rest of the community when it comes to crypto and VR. But this was a request to make it so that you can get the magic link instead of sending that to the email of a user to be able to get it and then display that within Unity so that if you're on a desktop, you'll go ahead and redirect into the browser. And if you are on a mobile device, you'll go ahead and then redirect into the mobile user wallet via Wall Connect. So that's now accessible through a new API. And I'm gonna be walking you through how to do that very simply in this video. If you do have any questions on the SDK and APIs, definitely let me know down in the comments below. And I'm hoping that there will be a pretty major update that will have the administrative panel and website about a month or two from when this video drops. So that will be a major, major change and will unlock a lot of uh, more consistent functionality uh, that you should be really looking forward to. And I can't wait to share that when, when that's ready. But for now, let's go ahead and switch into Unity. Actually, before we jump into Unity, I just wanted to show you. So if you go to crypto.fusvr.com, you're gonna go ahead and see the new API that's been added. It's called Get Magic Link. As you can see from the description, it needs to be called directly after the login function. And then what that will return back to you is the link that you need to show to the user or at least have a user click through in order to go into the browser or into their wallet and then authenticate by signing a mess. That will then unlock the functionality that you can go ahead and call any of the account information, such as getting the list of user NFTs that a user has. So let me show you how to do that very simply. It's one starting from this GitHub page, which will be linked in the description below. You're just gonna go ahead and come here, copy this link and paste that into the package manager via the add package from Git URL. Once you do that, which shouldn't really take that long, you'll then see this Fusefior Web 3 in your actual package manager. I have gone ahead and created this just dummy script for us called magic link. And uh, just we just wanna use the start function. So this is just functionality we're gonna trigger right at the beginning just for the purposes of this demo. Uh, everything here runs off of async, so let's make sure we do that. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do is call the, first actually go ahead and import in using fusevr.web3. That will get you access to the Web3 manager. Go this, call login. And for login, we need a app ID and an email address. The app ID is what I mentioned earlier. We'll be coming in with the admin panel. For now, we're just gonna use this dummy email address here. So let's go ahead and copy that. I'll go ahead and paste email into login and we're going to paste a dummy test app ID. And again, like I mentioned, this app ID will be coming in future updates. For now, it's just kind of a dummy field. Unlike previous videos, we don't want to wait on this, but we do want to capture the fact that this is a task and we'll call this login task that we need to await on. And we need to go ahead and import in the asynchronous tasks. So tasks are really just an encapsulation of waiting on an event to happen because all of these network calls are asynchronous. So that's gonna trigger the login and we're gonna be waiting for the user to authenticate for that with this login function. In the meantime, we're going to actually just wait on a quick delay here. And the reason for this delay is because Unity otherwise won't really send out the request uh, from the system if we don't do any, any sort of an await. So we're just gonna wait 100 milliseconds here, just something very quick to make sure Unity shoots out the login request to the Fuse VR server. And then once we do that, we can now talk to the web manager and get our magic link. So similarly, we need to pass in the exact same parameters, which are the way we can look up the actual magic link associated with the request. We're gonna wait on this and that's gonna return us a URL. So this is the URL we need to have the user go to to authenticate their actual wallet with our game. So here, I'm just going to display this in the logs just so that we can easily copy and paste it. But from a practical standpoint, you would wanna display this on your UI and have a button that a user clicks through 
and then sends them up to the wallet. So that's the URL, you got that. This is gonna be, again, the exact same URL that's sent to the user's email address if you put the email address in here. And that is what's gonna be responsible for then going ahead and authenticating the. And that's it, that's, that's, that's the new functionality that you get with the updated SDK. The rest, I'm actually just gonna quickly copy and paste in. Now this code here that I added, it, it's honestly just boilerplate for going ahead and looking up NFTs for a given user and printing them out. So you can see here, we're awaiting the login task. Once you get the login task, I'm gonna call it the get NFTs token just to showcase that in this demo on the Polygon network. And we're just gonna print out all of the data associated with the NFTs for my wallet address. So once you have just those few lines of code typed in, it's really not that much you can see right here. We have an empty game object, I've assigned the magic link and I'm gonna go ahead and click start. Go ahead and sometimes you actually might need to wait a little bit longer on this. So I don't, why don't I just go ahead and put in 200 milliseconds here and go ahead and click play. Okay, so there we go. We have access to the URL. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that URL here. And if we uh, go into our email, for purposes sake, this should be pretty much the, almost the identical email that uh, was triggered here. So I'm going to now go ahead and paste the URL into the browser and we're going to click next, connect. This is going to give us the signing message. So all of this is necessary to prove that a user actually is who they say they are. Let's click sign. We'll get a token. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now, if I go back into our console, you'll see that we did log in at triggered within Unity and here is all of the NFT data. So this is for one of the NFTs that I had created and you can see all of the JSON data associated with that. So this is the Fuse VR render streaming collection that is just a token that I created a while back and I've just assigned to this dummy account. It's an ERC-1155 as you can see here. It is has this block number is when it got owned. Here's the owner, which is myself, of course. All all of that information, all of that metadata, the name, etc. It's all captured and you can read all of that from the, N the NFT APIs. Again, all of these APIs basically get accessible. So if you want the account, you want account balance, you want ERC-20s, if you want NFTs, you can use that through the FuseVR APIs, basically because we have proven that the user is who they claim they are because they signed with their wallet through either a desktop browser or if they did it through a mobile wallet. So that's all possible with this APIs. That's the demo. There's there's really not much code that's needed. A lot of this is abstracted away for you on the server side so that you can just focus on calling the functions that you need, get the data that you need for that given user. So hopefully this, this video serves as a good understanding of how you can get the magic link and display that to a user and then go ahead and have them authenticate and what that really enables when it comes to NFTs. This is, I feel like just scratching the surface of what is necessary to connect Unity to the blockchain and, but hopefully serves as an important first step when it comes to actually doing that integration. So hopefully this is helpful. And again, look forward to more major updates coming in a couple months from now, where we really have kind of the administrative layer that will allow you to build your actual products in a kind of seamless fashion that isn't really kind of built behind Fuse VR UI, but rather, rather your, your own UI. So a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe. I'm really excited for that. I hope you are too. And I will catch you in the next one as more and more updates come around. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing in.